Thanks. I think the quicker, I think the quicker we give up on fixing medicine through political avenues, the better off we're going to be in the long run. That's what I've decided. That's, that's why I write about politics. And that's why I write in a way I hope the public, you know, reads and digests it. I really very much write for patients. And that's what Rebecca and I did in this book. We tried to really write it for the patient. I mean, physicians will write to us and say they've learned a lot by reading it, but it's the patients who are blown away by what they're reading. Mm -hmm. They don't, many of them don't even realize a nurse can call themselves a doctor. They don't realize a PA can introduce themselves as a doctor or have an independent practice. And so what's, what the main way physicians are going to fix medicine, and believe me, it is up to physicians to do this, Mm -hmm. is to go with patients and to form basically a team with our patients. So we got to go back to the old thing, um, you know, where you listen to the patient long enough, they'll tell you what's wrong with them. It's, it's the same. the physicians start talking about what the problem is, you know, the, us saying it's not good for us is not a way to talk to patients. It's not good for patients. Yeah. I mean, that's it. Patients are dying. That's, that's the, that's the position. That's, that's where we have to get the attention. So talking to people and talking to the public is the answer to this. Yeah. And that's this thank you for that. Thank you. Yeah, I've had this, this has been my driving force with our, our nonprofit organization. I say, you know what, we're not going to have any real change. What I'm working against, my, my mission is, you know, unnecessary amputations, but there's this incredible lack of awareness amongst the public and, and even providers as to what is happening out there. And you look at the five-year mortality rates when somebody has a non-healing wound or an amputation, et cetera, and it's worse than most forms of cancer and the parallels are, are real, but until the voice is heard, until there's a public outcry and demand for better, it's not going to happen. And, and Neuron, you raise such an important point. You can't go crying to, to the politicians to fix it. We've, we've already given up so much of our power as physicians, whether it be to insurance companies, whether it's to you know administrators, however it works. And, and so we've got to take that back. We've got to say, hey, wait a second. We know our, our, our field better than anybody. Why are we letting them make decisions that are having an impact that ultimately are hurting our patients? Well, when we're the ones who take that, that oath to do no harm. We're letting these clowns make the decisions that are ultimately hurting the people that we care most about. Well, and I think with the patients, as, as the lady said, I think... Uh, the key word to me in dealing with that is transparency. And there's never been, there's never been transparency. Go to five hospitals in your metro area and see what a CT scan costs, you know? And finally, Mm -hmm. I think the lay public is learning that, that, okay, I, I have to, what you said, I have to be my own advocate, which is a little different, but you're your own advocate if you buy a car. So, you know, but, uh, it's a, it sounds like it's a grassroot proposition. Um, it, it is. And, you know, I think the other thing is that physicians need to embrace our autonomy much more. And par- part of the reason that this has happened is become the corporatization of healthcare and medicine. And yes. we're at the point where more physicians are employed by a corporation mm-hmm. than own their own practice. Yeah. And that's because of the systemic problems that they feel burned out. They feel they, they can't handle dealing with the insurance companies and things like that. I get that. And actually, that's why I transitioned my practice and I'm now a direct primary care physician because that was the only Mm -hmm. way that I could regain my autonomy Mm -hmm. and not be employed by someone else. And that's why I'm allowed to speak out like I do because I own myself. Most doctors are terrified to say a word because they'll be fired and they have been fired for speaking Mm -hmm. out. So we need, the only way we can really change this is if physicians, for physicians to be free to practice medicine the way that they need to, to take care of their patients and to be able to say things that are the truth without fearing for their livelihood. Or, or to have physicians of our ilk who, they can't hurt me. That's right. That's, That's right. right. <laughs> none of, none, of, none yep. of the three of us, we got this white colored hair. They can't hurt me anymore. I'm happy to stand on a mountaintop and scream about your book. And scream I'm going to, I'm going to offer one other uh, additional thing that I have been complaining about for a long time, and uh, I might offer some salty language here, but uh, something that people have heard me say repeatedly over the more than 40 years that I practiced is uh, if doctors don't get together and uh, uh, lock arms and act as one unit, 
rather than pissing on each other about whose specialty b belongs to this procedure and that sort of thing, we're going to find ourselves in a lot of trouble. Well, here we are, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, here yeah, we are. You're, you're right. And, and to Rick's point about transparency, you know, there was transparency when my grandfather, he, he trained with the Mayo brothers. He graduated from Mayo med school in the thirties and yeah. he came back here and he practiced primary care for many, many years. And my father, you know, was primary care as well. He was actually also endocrinology, but really did pediatric primary care. And then I joined him. And the thing is, I couldn't be owned by anyone. I've never been employed outside of residency. That was enough for me. And I remember having a countdown, you know, and I remember one attending asked me, well, what would you do? And I said, wow, in 15 months, three weeks and two days, I'm going to do X, Y, Z. And I just... I didn't want to be employed. You know, I, I used to say it was like being a dancing monkey. You know, they'd, they'd heat up the floor and I'd have to kind of hop to it. And I think that's what we're seeing. We're seeing a nation of dancing monkeys. And what we need to do is we need to go back to owning ourselves and being able to stand on the mountaintop, as Rick said, and scream. And both Rebecca and I have the freedom to do that because we're both on our own and we're independent mm -hmm. doctors. And I, I couldn't work for anybody else. I just, I'm too mouthy. <laughs>